So, welcome to the uh, monitoring functional update. Uh, I'm Ben Kochi, I'm the team lead, uh, and we'll get straight on to the presentation. Um, so the monitoring team is a, uh, focusing on very, uh, various metrics projects we have at GitLab uh, for various metrics features. Uh, we spent most of the, the last uh, year developing Prometheus features, uh, and coming soon in 2018, we'll be working on new open or tracing and open tracing related features and also uh, logging features. So basically, you'll be able to take uh, applications in a production environment and with GitLab, you'll be able to monitor them with Prometheus. You'll be able to collect traces using open tracing uh, and you'll also be able to collect logging and, and analyze your logs. Uh, the, uh, recently, we've been working on the Prometheus Ruby client. Uh, we deployed it to production and it worked really great, except that the uh, data that we were getting back was a little too big. So we spent some time uh, over the last month working on uh, cleaning up what we had so that we could let it more uh, we could more easily deploy it in production without uh, overloading our Prometheus server. Uh, basically, uh, we, we ended up with about a million and a half different metrics uh, coming out of the the Rails application, and this was just a little bit too much to handle given that the Prometheus server was already handling another million and a half metrics from other systems. Uh, uh, we also had a small uh, SIGUP corruption issue, which is now fixed and will be available in 10.5. Uh, one of the nice things that we've been able to do with Prometheus is Prometheus allows you to take and vertically isolate uh, services. Uh, basically, what you can do is we're going to be creating a separate Prometheus server just to collect the, uh, the, the Ruby metrics from the main GitLab app. Uh, this way, we can keep expanding the amount of metrics that we get from different systems without overloading any individual Prometheus server. Uh, so we'll be setting up that soon. Uh, a little background uh, behind the API. Uh, we've done some improvements to the, to the API that uh, developers can use to in instrument things. Uh, basically, there's uh, you'll be uh, administrator GitLab administrators will now be able to use a feature flag to uh, separate out metrics. Um, this way, that, uh, if you're only interested in a few things, uh, uh, we'll include those on by default, and then there'll be more advanced debugging features uh, in the metrics uh, available if you want them. Uh, coming up in uh, Ten five. We have. We're going to be deploying a. Uh, we're going to have a basically automatic Prometheus deployment for uh, jobs in CI and Kubernetes. Uh, this is going to be really great because it will reduce the barrier to entry for custom monitoring for uh, projects uh, that are are developed using GitLab. Uh, also coming in ten six, uh, we're going to be adding custom and business metrics. What this is going to allow you to do is if you have a you're a, a custom metric defined in your application uh, and Prometheus, uh, the deployed Prometheus is scraping that, you'll be able to create your own queries and uh, those will show up in your merge request uh, uh, views so that you can see if you have a specific feature that you wanna make sure that uh, is working correctly uh, before and after deployment, you'll be able to get that instead of just the, the, the usual generic metrics like CPU and memory. Um, uh, and for example, shopping carts and other things. Uh, Prometheus 2.0 is now in production. Um, uh, it's been working quite well, uh, we, except for the when we overload it. And that's uh, all I had. Uh, let's go to questions. Yes, the team lead is the band lead. I'm uh, uh, singing all about metrics and monitoring. Um, will uh, Kim? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, do you mean you'll be able to? Uh, uh, yeah, for for the uh, other projects on gitlab.com. 
Uh, so we already, we already, yes, if you have a project on GitLab.com and you've configured a Kubernetes cluster, uh, 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 it, Yes, if, if, if you're on GitLab.com and you've configured a Kubernetes cluster, you'll be able to deploy Prometheus to that Kubernetes cluster and remotely access it. Uh, so that'll, that'll just work, or at least it, sh it, it, should just, it is intended to work. Uh, FOSTEM, actually, yeah. Uh, so one of the things that uh, uh, I did as, a, as the Prometheus team is uh, we, uh, FOSTEM is a large open source conference uh, and we use Prometheus to monitor the conference. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a real quick uh, uh, set of, I took some screenshots of that for demonstrating to the, uh, the university uh, that hosts FOSTEM and I have those somewhere. Let me see if I can get those out quickly. Oh, why is imager so slow? There we go. All right. Let's screen share that. So uh, basically, um, uh, at FOSTEM, we bring a Prometheus server on site. Uh, and we monitor uh, various things about uh, uh, mostly the video streaming at the conference and a little bit of the, uh, some stuff about the Wi-Fi at the conference. So basically, uh, you can see from the graph that we were uh, closely monitoring the bandwidth available to the public streaming interface. So uh, if people are aware of uh, FOSTEM is a large open source conference, there are 25 simultaneous streaming uh, 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 video streams of all the different rooms at the conference. and uh, on the public front end, we we stream from the university to some uh, uh, rented virtual or rented physical machines at Scaleway, and we are doing about 400 megabits of bandwidth, three to 400 megabits of bandwidth for video streaming during the day. So it's quite a popular uh, set of streams. Uh, we can also see that we monitor uh, the review state. So as uh, as the videos are recorded, they're automatically uploaded into a transcoding pipeline uh, that allows the, uh, the, the, the person who gave the talk to actually do the cropping and editing of their video with a pretty nice little web interface. And then they, they, they can say, okay, my video is ready to go and they can self publish the videos and then they get automatically transcoded, uh, uh, cropped, transcoded, cleaned up, and then shipped to YouTube uh, for people to see all the talks at FOSTEM. Uh, so that's it's a really nice automated way to get these talks out quickly. So already, I think two thirds of the talks from FOSTEM are up on the web. Uh, uh, usually, for a conference like uh, for a conference of this complication, it used to take months. So now it's all nice and automated. Um, we also we uh, we also have some nice stats from the from the Wi-Fi. So you can see uh, on the left and the lower left, you can and and the lower right uh, a normal time during the day at the university, there's only a, a, uh, uh, about 1,500 people on the Wi-Fi. And then FOSTEM comes around and we, we just completely blow away all the Wi-Fi stats and have uh, many, many, many thousands of people on the Wi-Fi. Um, and you can see that we're, uh, we also blow away all the bandwidth stats during, during the normal uh, conference. Uh, and then I also have a nice little graph here, which shows uh, uh, the, the, the top used Wi-Fi AP. So you can see during different times of the, uh, of the day, people are going to different talks. And so you, so you can kind of see which talks are most popular based on uh, the, how many people are in different parts of the Wi-Fi. Uh, hopefully next year, uh, 
I'm working to try and clean up some of this data so that we can actually try and get it down to by buildings. We can actually see the amount of people moving around uh, between different buildings. Uh, Tune, I hope that uh, uh, that solves your curiosity for FOSTEM monitoring. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right, thank you very much. See you in the team call.